Welcome to the Minnesota Black Robe Regiment channel. Um, for those of you that are repeat uh, viewers, thank you so much, especially subscribers. Um, I'm a small, unknown, um, ultimately I'm just a, a nobody in the grand scheme of commentary on things like politics and uh, culture and worldview so those of you that uh, subscribe and keep coming back um, and watch my videos um, every single view I really appreciate um, whether a video that I do gets seven views or in the case of some like the interviews uh, where I'm getting a thousand or more on on some of my stuff you have no idea how much I appreciate it those of you that are new, uh, I love feedback. I love pushback. I actually enjoy disagreement. Uh, so fill the comment section with disagreement um, or encouragement. When you do that, make sure you're doing it uh, with an intellectual honesty and a pursuit of uh, civility. I know that there are times where I don't sound as if I'm approaching a story or um, a, a news report civilly because there are times I get angry uh, and I think rightly so I guess what I'm trying to say in all of this as I lead into my next commentary is that we are in a strange strange crossroads here in the United States in 2020. We have been hit from every direction with every single thing that you could think of short of the, the end times plagues that uh, dispensationalists just absolutely love to talk about whenever uh, the world seems to be in turmoil. Why I'm leading into it the, the way I am is because this is going to be a really touchy subject um, and I need to I don't want to say nuance but I need to make sure that I'm parsing my words in a way that what I'm saying is understood for what is actually being said and not something that's going to be easily misquoted or taken out of context and I, it's probably arrogant on my part to think that anybody would want to misquote me or take me out of context uh, that anybody's even going to pay attention to me but in the culture that we live in today with cancel culture and deplatforming being a thing with um, doxing and um, hunting down someone's uh, place of employment and harassing a person's employer to the point where the employer feels like they have no option other than to fire uh, the person who is the offending cultural party um, it is wise that we are very careful to speak in a way that just cannot be misconstrued so now having said that i want to address a news article that was put out by business insider on september 5th the the title or the heading of this article is drafts of a dhs report called white supremacists the most persistent and lethal terror threat in the u.s okay i I'm gonna come right out at the start of this and say white supremacy is evil any type of supremacy based on skin pigmentation melanin count ethnicity whatever the case might be is evil if someone is black or african-american or a person of color and they think that they are superior to someone else because of that that is evil 
if a person uh, happens to be white or Caucasian, if you will, and they think they're better than someone else strictly because of that, that is evil. Uh, the God of Christianity, the God of the Bible, despises that type of ethnic hatred. It is absolutely 100% rotten to its core. A person who clings to such ideology is not capable of professing Christ as Savior. They may say they do. They may say that they are a Christian. They may say all sorts of things. But they cannot be a Christian and hate another person for something like their ethnicity or their skin color or their melanin count or their pigmentation. You cannot be a Christian and believe such things. The reason why I chose this article to launch or to start off with such a statement is because it is an absolute, whether we're talking about the report written by the Department of Homeland Security or the fact that the article was written, we are, it is absolutely a work of stupidity, especially in light of the events that have been taking place in the United States since Memorial Day of this year. Everything that has happened since the death of George Floyd, ha, when we're, we're talking about acts of terror and violence and uh, outrage, has been perpetrated. And, and I'm not saying that I'm aware of every single tiny little terroristic act that has happened in the United States whether it be through white supremacy or some other extremity of culture that is built upon hatred and uh, ethnic superiority. But by and large, the destruction that has been taking place in the United States this year, where we're, we're talking about violence against, violence against people, where we're talking about destruction of private property and public property, Property, where we're talking about the infliction of terror upon a populace is coming at the hands of two groups united in one front for one purpose and one purpose only. And that is the uniting of Black Lives Matter, which is at its core, admittedly, a Marxist organization. It, it, there's, you can't deny that. You cannot deny that Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization. The founders of Black Lives Matter, and I don't care if you're talking about blacklivesmatter.org, if you're talking about the blacklivesmatter.com, the people who are known as the founders have admitted, have publicly and boldly clarified for everyone and declared for their audience that they love Marxism, that they hate the United States, that their entire goal is the dismantling of the United States as a republic and as a capitalist nation. They want to destroy the, the, the core of what it means to be American and they want to destroy traditional values. They want to destroy families. They want to do away with the idea of a traditional core nuclear family. They hate those things. That's their stated goal. Now, couple that with, as an umbrella, all of the radical groups that they take in, such as the Black Panthers, uh, the remnants of the Black Liberation Army. Radical Marxist groups from the 60s and 70s. There again, 
undeniable, indisputable that the Black Panthers and the Black Liberation Army had ties and links and desires to institute Marxism. That was their goal. They were funded by Marxists from other countries and from Marxists within the United States. Black Lives Matter as an umbrella encompasses all of that. Now, further, ingrained and, and intertwined with Black Lives Matter is Antifa and Antifa Black Bloc, which are, at their core, not just against fascism, but Marxist organizations. Antifa doesn't exist just to destroy fascism. Antifa exists to defeat authoritarian fascism so that they can, in its place, put in authoritarian Marxism. Period. Those two groups, working together, intertwined, through the events surrounding the death of George Floyd have become the most violent, destructive, dangerous organizations that have ever been seen in the United States. Period. Minneapolis has had entire neighborhoods burned to the ground between the riotous thuggery that happened up there during the mostly peaceful protests. And that happened at the hands of people who were involved with both Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Period. As much as they want to place the blame on the lack of, of leadership and intervention on the part of Mayor Fry and Governor Walls, that still rest squarely on the shoulders of Marxist radicals who were driving and funding and supporting and encouraging the destruction of Minneapolis, who have subsequently gone and tried to encourage the destruction of other Minnesota cities and neighborhoods. Period. End of story. Moreover, it has skyrocketed branched out into places like Portland, Seattle, Washington, Washington, D.C., New York City, Baltimore, Boston, just hundreds of places across the United States. Portland alone, by the time that you see this video, Portland alone will have had over a hundred nights straight of rioting, of thuggery, of terrorism. There's no other way to, to say it. It's terrorism. And heaven forbid you be an American citizen who says enough is enough. I am resisting this. I'm going to protect my business. How many people have been beaten up? Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. If you resist this, you will be attacked. You will be beaten. There are stories pouring in every day to the, for the people who want to listen over and over and over again of business owners who said, enough, I'm done, I'm done. Kenosha, Wisconsin. City was, the, the downtown area, the business districts, the car dealerships, hardware stores, restaurants burned to the ground. Business owners are like, I'm done, I'm done. I'm not coming back here anymore. I'm not doing this. I didn't, I didn't have anything to do with the event that sparked this round of rioting. Rochester, New York. Same thing. Maybe not to the scale of Kenosha, maybe not to the scale of Minneapolis, and certainly not to the scale of Portland and Seattle and other places. But for what? And by who? And, and look at the political pundits who are supporting these acts. 
without without any any chance that you were going to be able to refute this every single one of these groups is backed up by Marxist Democrats and it's almost exclusively happening in cities that are run by Marxist Democrats by leftists not liberals not conservatives by leftists by Marxists by people who have as their core a fundamental desire to change the very fabric of the United States into a Marxist nation. And they're doing everything in their power to do it by changing their cities first. You can deny this. You can argue against it. You can tell me that I'm full of baloney or other things, but you're wrong. In the Department of Homeland Security has the audacity, has the sheer gahonas to come out and say that the, the greatest threat and most persistent and lethal terror threat in the United States right now is white supremacists. Are you kidding me? Antifa is not a white supremacist group and they'll kill you. They will kill you. Black Lives Matter is not a white supremacist group, and they will kill you. It doesn't bring me joy to talk about this. But this is the way that propaganda works. This is the way that legacy media and mainstream media works. This is the way that agenda-driven bureaucrats work. They, t they look at you and they tell you to do the one thing that, that would make anybody else say you're, you're crazy. And that is confess something that is exactly the opposite of what your eyes are telling you. So if you're sitting at a stop sign and you're waiting to go and a car comes barreling up behind you and you're watching it in your rear view, rear view mirror and they hit you and push you out into traffic so that you now get T-boned by a dump truck and the driver of the car that hits you jumps out and says my gosh you're an idiot why did you run out in the tra why did you pull out into traffic that way so that that truck could t-bone you what are you suicidal well you're gonna look at that person and you're either gonna call them a liar or you're gonna insist that they're crazy but somehow the person who just rear-ended you and pushed you out into traffic in front of that dump truck manages to convince everybody around you that it was your fault. That you did it. That is the very definition of propaganda. A couple of days ago, the, the story broke about a group of, uh, well, I shouldn't even say a group, two guys that belong to a loosely knit group of people called the Boogaloo Boys. Now, I don't know a lot about the Boogaloo Boys, and I don't really care to. Uh, I've heard people refer to, you know, bugging out or, you know, boogalooing, uh, which for them, what that means is like when when the, the flying fecal matter hits the whirling blades of the oscillating air mover, uh, they don't want to be around and so they're going to take off by all accounts the boogaloo boys are if if what is being said about them is true the boogaloo boys are a radical organization that is hell-bent on if you can call it an organization um, it's kind of hell-bent on starting the next great war in in the united, civil war in the united states whether it be through political or social uh, engagement or 
strictly based along ethnic lines. Uh, so they're pretty radical uh, in that. But a case of asking me to disbelieve what's happening, two of these self-professed Bugaloo boys were arrested uh, the other day for trying to partner with Hamas. And I want you to think about that for a second and kind of let that sit in, sink in. A group that is predominantly kind of considered alt-right made up, as far as I can tell from what research I've done, of predominantly white folk who allegedly hate anybody who's not white and want to start a war based on ethnicity and culture are partnering with a group that is made up of Middle Easterners of the Muslim or Islamic faith. I'm supposed to believe that the Boogaloo boys are going to partner with them. Tried to partner with them. Now, could these two guys legitimately be Boogaloo boys? Sure, they could be. Could they be claiming that they're Boogaloo boys and they are strictly doing what they're doing because they're nut jobs? Absolutely. I, I would go with that one probably 70% of the time. But we also have to say to ourselves that in light of that story breaking and then this story breaking, is there a chance that these guys aren't Boogaloo boys, but they're just nut jobs themselves claiming they're boogaloo boys because they want there to be a problem and they want to paint a picture that it's white people that are the problem that it's white racists that are the problem and and how else are we to understand these things today when right now we have information being taught to to students in high school elementary school college that says that whiteness is a problem and that everyone is a, is a racist or every white person is a racist strictly for the sake of being white. So it's very easy for us to see a story that says here's these two white boogaloo boys trying to partner with a radical terrorist group and go yep there, there's these radical white supremacists again and you know this probably sounds like tinfoil hat kind of stuff but it, at this point as a friend of mine on uh, social media said I'm getting to the point where the people that I trust right now are the people who have been wearing tinfoil hats for a long time because a lot of what they're saying is true I, I don't want this stuff to be true But what's happening right now with the mainstream media, with the legacy media, and with the bureaucrats, and with the Democrats, the, the bureaucrats, these unelected folks in government, and the Democrats, is they're, they're doing their level best right now. All of these different swirling masses of, of people, they're doing their level best right now to convince you that you're part of the problem for no other reason than the color of your skin. Sounds kind of racist to me. And that you need to disbelieve your eyes as you watch radical Marxist groups like Black Lives Matter and Antifa and Antifa Black Bloc burn down cities. Disbelieve that. That's not the problem. That's not the greatest threat to the United States right now. The greatest threat is from a group of people that haven't been doing that. So I'm supposed to believe that Antifa is a white supremacist group? Because that's what you're asking me to do. You're asking me to believe that because that right now, those are the white people that are causing a problem. The leftist Marxists of Antifa and Antifa Black Bloc and other Marxist organizations are the ones that are causing the problems.
And I'm going to say this one more time. I hate racists. I do. I hate them. I hate racists of every color. I hate racists with a righteous hatred. Anybody who's racist, I hate you. Because you are the problem with this country right now. If you hate me because I'm white, you're a racist. If I hate you because of the color of your skin, I'm a racist. But I don't hate people for the color of their skin. I don't hate people for where they were born. I hate people who embrace a sinful lifestyle and refuse to see it as sin and refuse to reject it. And, I, and I'm not using hate the way most people would. I hate racism the way I would hate a rapist. That's how serious it is. I hate racism and racists the same way that I hate child molesters. Try that on. That's the kind of hatred I'm talking about. So for those of you out there who are hating one another because of your ethnicity, who are hating one another because of your melanin count, because of the pigmentation of your skin, if that's what your hatred for others is based off of, you are an evil person. If you determine that you hate that person because of way, the way they look, just from the sight of them, you are an evil, rotten, wicked person. And here's, here's how I'm going to end this. You need to repent. You need to confess that sin. Because God, through His Son Jesus Christ, has promised you forgiveness for even that. You can be forgiven for that kind of hatred. You can be forgiven for that kind of sin. Jesus paid the penalty for racism of all stripes on the cross. Jesus died for racist whites. Jesus died for racist blacks. If they repent of their sins and turn to him and confess him as Lord and Savior. But if you don't confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you continue to hate others because of their pigmentation, and because of their ethnicity, and because of their race, when you die, God's judgment will fall on you. He will judge you for your hatred of others. He will judge you for their, your rejection of them based on their race or ethnicity. He will judge you for rejecting Him, for the sinful idolatry that you have towards yourself. And all of you, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, whatever the case might be, If you die apart from Christ, if you die hating others because of the pigmentation of their skin, because of their ethnicity, and you die without having Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will spend eternity in hell with the very people that you spent your life hating. God is not a respecter of persons. God does not save based on ethnicity. God does not damn based on ethnicity. You don't get a pass if you're white. You don't get a pass if you're black. You don't get a pass if you're Asian or Hispanic or Latin American or Antarctic or Native American. You don't get a pass. God hates sin. And according to Psalm 5.5, 5, he hates unrepentant sinners. And he says that the hatred of a person because of how they look is murder. 
and he damned and punished murderers in hell for eternity because it violates his high and holy character but there's hope for you confess your sin and you turn to Christ for forgiveness and he will give you a new heart he will fill you with the Holy Spirit he will be your Lord he will be your Savior and He will cause you to love your fellow image bearers. He can change a white racist to love a black man. He can change a black racist to love a white man. Whatever the kind of hatred that you feel for whatever ethnicity that it is, God can change you. But make no mistake, there will be no mercy for you if you die without repentance. And I don't want that for you. Turn to Christ and live. Repent of your hatred for your fellow man.